Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me in the Distress Oxide or Ink and Oxide colour combination series. Today we're looking at Lost Shadow. So we are working through all the Distress Oxide colours individually and alphabetically. Um, so we are up to the L's now, which is really exciting. But Lost Shadow is a little bit of an odd one because it is such a pale colour. It's hard to know how to use it for blending and combinations. We'd usually only use it as an accent and the same for all the greys really. So let's Let's uh, shed some light on where we can be mixing this colour. Now before we do that we're going to swatch it, we're going to compare it to other greys in the range as well using my swatch chart. Uh, this is free for you to download on my blog, that's all linked down below, then you can fill it in at your leisure with the colours that you already have, so it's a good way of tracking which colours you have and which ones you are still left to get. Um, but also things like the labels on my brushes, the labels on my ink pads, they are also there free for you to download too. And all the uh, ink pads, the brushes, the mats and everything I'm using today to show, share this with you, these are also linked down below. So shall we swatch this first of all? Let's bring in a uh, blending mat. Now the blending mats linked down below are clear, it's worth noting that they are clear but um, the, this one here I've actually added alcohol ink to just so that I can see it on my mat. Now, the first thing to notice is that Lost Shadow, when you see it on the pad, it actually looks like a very pale lilac. Um, so we'll see what it looks like when it's on paper, but you can see it's got kind of almost a pinky tone to it. And I noticed that also in the brush too. So, and I only use my brushes for one color. So let's pop it onto some white cardstock first of all and let's see how it is. So it is, it does have a very slight pink tone to it. It's ever so pale, really beautiful colour. Probably the closest to white that you're going to get within the oxide range besides obviously picket fence. But isn't that just a beautiful colour? I think that is absolutely gorgeous. Do you know what, in home decor and such, this is such a popular shade at the moment. Now reasonably similar to the label uh, because it's so pale it's hard to tell I think the label shows it as a slightly cooler color than it actually is um, so let's take a look we only actually need to look at this back back sheet here because this has the few grays in there um, and so this is my lost shadow as you can see pumice stone has a warmer tone a little more yellow to it but not too dissimilar I think you could do these combinations also with pumice stone as well and then when we look at hickory smoke, it's miles off. It's way darker and way cooler as well. Um, nothing else at all compares around that area. So there we go. So really Lost Shadow does stand on its own. So let's get straight into a color combination. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go into shaded lilac with this. So I think, no, do you know what? Actually, I'm changing my mind. As I film, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go into Victorian Velvet first because Lost Shadow has got that pinky tone. Now you notice within the colour combinations that I'm doing today that I'm actually going to be using all my paler colours, what I call my pastel colours within the Distress Oxide range. And this is just because otherwise if I was to use really bright colours it would just overpower Lost Shadow and you really would lose it and we don't want to do that. So just bringing Lush, the sorry Victorian Velvet up to the Lost Shadow and then mixing the two together. So blending them through the two, bringing them up into the gray and then bringing that line down into the Victorian Velvet. And for this stage, I don't usually reapply any more ink unless I really, really need to elsewhere. So I'll put a bit more down here. That is gorgeous. Those colors into each other are stunning, aren't they? So subtle, really, really beautiful. Next, we're going to go into the shaded lilac. So turn this over and pop the shaded lilac at the end. The colors are also so pale that I didn't even consider to wipe my mat there where I should have done. So again, quite a pastel color, a nice pale color, just on the end there. Absolutely beautiful and bringing Victorian Velvet into the two. Now again, these are two colors that just work so beautifully together. If you want something nice and calm and relaxing, something that's quite um, toned down, they are just stunning. So I've done quite a lot of the Lost Shadow there so we can take a look at it, I think it's lovely. Like I say, if you want to substitute for white, 
this one is perfect it's almost got a slight silver sheen to it uh, I think Lost Shadow is just the perfect name for it it's beautiful so that was Shaded Lilac Victorian Velvet and Lost Shadow in that combination and then let's do another one so let's bring in just wipe my mat Lost Shadow first of all into the end again because it is the palest you're not going to get anything darker than this really or sorry paler than this so there's my Lost Shadow popping that down the next one I'm going to go into is Weathered Wood which is a blue grey or a grey blue but again quite a pale colour and these two are going to just just blend in nicely to each other I think absolutely beautifully but because we've got a hint of blue within this one it's almost it is almost a grey colour the Weathered Wood but there's that blue undertone within it which is going to lead nicely into the next colour and I often talk about middlemen in these videos and that's exactly what this is to lead Lost Shadow into a blue just using Weathered Wood as a middleman and it's going to be going into Tumbled Glass so I'll pop this again the paler colours and because it's so pale I do find I have to work a little bit harder to get a nice smooth blend more so than with the darker colours and let's bring some weathered wood in there again a bit more that's just lovely the two of them bring that up there some colours you just find you just have to work a bit harder to blend and lastly that's just beautiful for a new baby isn't that a gorgeous colour combination kind of reminds me, reminds me of baby elephants <laughs> for some reason and lastly into bundled sage because we've got into the blue we can now go into a green quite easily so bundled sage on the bottom here not a bright colour by any means still one of these pastel much lighter shades just popping it on the end and blending tumbled glass into there there we go that just pretty again I've done quite a lot of the lost shadow just to make that the focus as it is uh, the color that we're looking at most today but let's just take these out of the way and look at both of these color combinations let's put one one with the grey at the bottom, one with the grey at the top. As you can see, what a beautiful colour. Isn't it just gorgeous? Now, with the Lost Shadow, if you are going to be using your spritzing techniques and such and your water techniques, um, you're not going to get as much of a difference as you would if you were using a darker colour. Um, but it's really good fun to play around with anyway, with smooching, for example, spraying, putting droplets of water on your ink blends. But again, there's a three colour and a four colour blend for you to play with at home. I just think that's lovely and fresh, really beautiful. But without the green, definitely baby, sort of baby elephant meal about it. This is very much sort of floral. And of course, you can use your blend either way. If you're doing a blended panel at the, um, on the back of your card, for example, you can switch them over and use them either way around. There we go. So uh, like I say, everything I've used is linked down below. If you could share this video, give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll be back again very soon with the next colour alphabetically in the range. See you again very soon, everybody. Take care.